All right, everyone, the Democrats are in total disarray and they've begun to turn on each other. That's what we're we'll talking about on today's video. Not only that, we're going to look at precisely why that is, why the Democrats are becoming unhinged and unraveling. But first, a warm welcome to all of you, especially our first time viewers. I post two videos a day analyzing current events in light of some super awesome conservative trends so that you can live out your values, impact lives, and change the world. So if you would, please smack that bell and subscribe button. It'd be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel and our online community. All right, so the Democrats, lo they absolutely love to call people racist. They love to throw the hate bomb, right? The H-bomb, right? You're a purveyor of hate. You're a racist. You're a bigot. But now, as if this were scripted for a slapstick comedy, they're actually lobbying the racist accusations at each other. Just a couple of days after President Trump sent out his tweets telling the most radical of Democrats, hey, if you don't like the country, then you can leave. All right, go back to the countries, your countries of origin, these failed states. The De Democrats are actually turning on each other. Kyle Smith over at National Review has a great piece on the current Democratic disarray. He notes that in just the last few days, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the gift that keeps on giving, accused Nancy Pelosi of being a racist. And then when confronted with that, she turned around and she denied that she ever called Pelosi a racist. Her chief of staff and shady business partner compared the gay Kansas congresswoman Sharice Davids who of course is a Democrat. He compared her to segregation as Southern Democrats because her votes enabled uh, a racist political and social system. And then in response to such accusations, the official Twitter account of the House Democrats accused AOC's chief of staff of being a racist, saying that he was explicitly singling out a Native American woman of color. I mean, this is all within... 72 hours, right? You're a racist. No, you're a racist. No, you're a bigot. Well, you're only saying that because you're a bigot. And while, while all this is going on, you had the spectacle, the visual spectacle of left-wing activists storming an ICE building, right? ICE being Immigration and Customs Enforcement. They storm this ICE building in Aurora, Colorado. They take down the American flag that's flying above, and they actually place it with the Mexican flag. Think about it. They take down the American flag and hoisted the Mexican flag, which, of course, raises the question, if Mexico is so great, why the hell are you trying to get into the United States? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. If you actually thought that Mexico was better than the United States, wouldn't you want to be deported there? <laughs> if Mexico is so great, why are you here? And leaving the radical absurdity of the action aside, can you imagine what kind of campaign commercial this is going to make? Can you even fathom the next Trump 2020 campaign commercial featuring each Democrat calling the other a racist and bigot against the backdrop of left-wing protesters hoisting the Mexican flag above an American government agency? But then as if things couldn't get worse, <laughs> you had pandemonium overtake the floor of the House of Representatives yesterday on Tuesday afternoon and early evening, where Democrat-led effort to formally rebuke President Trump over his tweets and comments, telling the squad, the four radical Dem congresswomen to leave the country if they don't like it. That effort to once again formally call someone a racist and a bigot completely backfired when Nancy Pelosi actually called him a bigot and in so doing violated the rules of the chamber. It was so bad. There was so much chaos in the chamber that Pelosi actually abandoned control of the floor. It was something that happened, hasn't happened in 35 years in the House of Representatives. What happened is that Pelosi criticized Trump's tweets and she called them, we could all say it, racist, right? Disgusting and all that, which apparently violates the rules of the House. And so the Republicans erupted and demanded that her comments be censored and that she not be allowed to speak on the House floor for the rest of the day. I mean, it was crazy. Look, the Democrats just don't know what to do with Trump. 
Okay, and I think this is largely because modern left-wing liberalism is so contorted in the way it's able to view reality, and I really mean that seriously. We're all now living in the midst of a very real tension, all of us. It's a, it's a societal contradiction of sorts, okay? And we're all working this tension out in our own ways. So on the one hand, the tension involves the vast majority of populations have rejected a one-size fits all way of understanding the world derived from the philosophical notion of modernity, okay? Modernity believed that scientific rationalism was the one and only objective way of understanding reality for all peoples, for all times, for all places. And it thus provided the basis for a single worldwide political and economic system that would supposedly unite the global population to a peaceful and harmonious whole, well, all hold hands and sing Coca-Cola songs and everything like that. That faith, that belief in modernity has died. Scholars note that we are now characterized not so much by modernist sensibilities, but rather by postmodernist sensibilities, okay? And postmodernism, rather than believing in a single one-size-fits-all political and economic system for all people's times and places, postmodernism values cultural diversity and plurality. It's where we get the whole notion of multiculturalism from and all that kind of stuff. However, there is a problem. This is the tension that we're all living in. It's that even though we've rejected modernity philosophically, we continue to live under modernity and its political and economic structures and systems in the form of globalization. And so we've rejected modernity philosophically all the while we're living under it socially. And this tension, this contradiction is resulting in two different outworkings, two major outworkings. On the one hand, you have the nationalist populist backlash, which of course is what this channel is dedicated to analyzing and celebrating. You have a massive worldwide backlash that seeks to bring down and replace the globalist world order with a new world order comprised of the revitalized nation state with national sovereignty and cultural integrity restored for each and every nation and an international relation centered on the mutual respect and honoring of our respective traditions, customs, and distinctive ways of life. So this is what we're seeing happening among um, the conservative rank and file here in the United States and in uh, Bolsonaro's Brazil and in Latin America as a whole and throughout Europe, particularly Central Europe and Italy, and then Russia and India and Japan. We're even seeing it emerge in Canada in African nations, in the Samoan Islands, in the Pacific, Australia with their recent conservative victory in their national elections, Greece, of course, with their turn to the right a uh, couple of weeks back. This is the nationalist populist backlash that's attempting to align the social and political order with these more postmodern sentiments with a post-globalist uh, world order. But then you have another reaction, okay? And that's the reaction that we're seeing here with the Democrats and indeed with the globalist elite, you know, like Juncker and all, all throughout the world. And that reaction is to double down on globalism, to defend its institutions and practices. But here's the key. This is what you need to get to defend globalism, but no longer being able to appeal to modernist frames of reference for that defense, since such modernist frames of reference have largely disappeared even for globalist advocates. So you've got to get that. It's very important. We see this explicitly on our college campuses, which are thoroughly globalist, right? Name me one college campus where the majority of students are being trained in globalism, where the majority of students and professors can actually look you in the eye and tell you there's only one single belief system and meaning system for all people on the planet, right? In rad radical contrast to this, virtually every single college student will actually tell you there's no such thing as truth. Truth as a category doesn't exist. There is no absolute objective truth out there. There is no one meaning for all peoples, for all times, for all places. They are not modernists by any stretch of the definition in that sense. And yet, they are still trying to embrace globalism. They're still trying to embrace a globalist world order that relies on philosophical modernism for its legitimacy. So if modern-day globalists can no longer appeal to modernist frames of reference to defend their globalist commitments, what then do they turn to? 
Their only recourse is what? To rely on intimidation and violence. You better believe this or else. They turn to verbal violence, right? You racist, you bigot. Or increasingly, as we're seeing with Antifa and others, they turn to physical violence and assault. And so, given that they have no longer any, really any intellectual resources to draw from, it shouldn't surprise us when they begin turning on one another with the very same intimidation tactics. This is why leftist liberalism is simply doomed to fail. It has nothing to hold itself together but a combination of intimidation and hysterical lunacy, all but guaranteeing its eventual and inevitable demise. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out some of our awesome coffee mugs and t-shirts that celebrate all things nationalist, populist, and traditionalist that you're just going to love. And please click on either our Patreon, Subscribe Star, or PayPal links below and consider becoming a monthly or one-time supporter of this channel and help us to continue to analyze current events in light of super awesome conservative trends so that you can live in the present in light of even better things to come. God bless.